Tim Miller, your thoughts. Yeah, that's a tough one to follow. Um, I'm, I'm with Dave on uh, the Colorado Springs. I, look, you shouldn't have to be a hero at a gay bar, I guess, is the first thing to start that I would like to start with. Uh, you know, so uh, good on that person, uh, and we should focus on on them. Hopefully, we'll get to hear their story in the coming days. But, but you know, gay bars shouldn't require a um, a hero. I, I think if you look at Colorado Springs, uh, to Dave's point, I, this is not the easiest place to be gay, uh, Colorado Springs. Uh, you have the Air Force Academy right there, focus on the family right there. Uh, so it is a very conservative community. And, and I think that in that intro in the New York Times article, the interesting thing is about Club Q, now that you see the pictures there, it is, it's like in a strip mall next to a bowling alley you know, uh, quite a bit, quite a ways from downtown, right? So this is not in the central business district of, or, or the area where other bars are in Colorado Springs. And I think that reflects the type of community this is, where where this refuge that word people keep using needs to be, in, in a lot of ways, even separate from where uh, the rest of, of the revelry takes place. I think in part because, uh, you know, that that's where folks felt safe. And, and for a, a place where folks needed to go to feel safe, um, for that to be the place that they get shot up um, does does bring some extra pain to this. Uh, one other thing that I, I just I really want to make sure I mention is um, El Paso County is a Second Amendment sanctuary. So Colorado passed a red flag law. Jared Polis, who's been a really great governor in Colorado, uh, passed a red flag law. And in 2019, the county that Colorado Springs is in passed a, a law that made them a sanctuary from this red flag law. So that people, so that when people ask now, why did, why was this guy who had called in a bomb threat on his mother, apparently, uh, allegedly a year prior, you know, able to purchase this kind of high-powered weaponry, and, and and part of the answer to that question is that Colorado literally tried to pass a law to stop a shooting like this, and yet local Republican politicians in El Paso refused. In some ways, may not refuse to abide by the law, but but are going out of their way to not abide by the law. And so, you know, people say don't politicize these shootings and the fallout and all this. But like, how can you not politicize this this slaughter when that happened? I mean, forget putting aside motive and all that, which you know I'm sure we can get into. Like this was eminently preventable with the laws on the books in Colorado, and yet this conservative county that. Uh, you know, thought that it was more important that people have easy access to these, you know, weapons of mass slaughter than than making sure that people are safe. And so it, it's just freaking tragic on every level. Frank, I don't can, can think I very many. Of... Go ahead, please. Yeah, yeah. The, the El Paso sheriff uh, quote vehemently opposed the law and has a policy that narrows. The, I'm reading here narrows the circumstances where it can be used in his office. The policy is that they would seek this. Only if there are urgent circumstances and probable cause can be established that a crime is being or has been committed. The undersheriff, who's the incoming sheriff, has also made a statement, quote, that he believes the red flag law is an overreach and a violation of the Fourth Amendment, barring illegal search and seizure. He would not enforce the red flag law, saying he would only seize weapons if there is probable cause, the same thing, uh, that a crime has been committed. It's amazing. And I mean, Frig, I want to bring you in on this. I mean, Increasingly, and because of the clip at which we're all together covering mass shootings in America, the victims' families do want to call for changes. And so the only people who don't want to talk policy at the time of a mass shooting is the Republican Party. Most everyone else is for changing the laws that allow people like this gunman to have easy access to AR-15 style rifles. The vast majority of Americans, when polled on red flags law, are absolutely, red flag laws are absolutely in favor of it. And we've got to pull on this thread a little bit more. Allow me to do that with regard to this county uh, that Colorado, Colorado Springs sits in. Yeah, that's right. The, the sheriffs there, they've come out and said it's even, it's even worse. It's bad enough to say, hey, we're really not going to enforce red flag laws here. <laughs> you know, we're not going to do our job to protect and serve the community. But it's even worse because what they've said is, we're not going to be the ones who petition for the seizure of those weapons under Colorado law. Colorado law says there are two parties who can uh, temporarily seize weapons until they figure out a threat, the police and family members of the threatening person. So let's process that for a second. Let's, let's take this example. This shooter 
threatened his, to blow up his mom's home. So in this case, the police, the sheriffs are saying, yeah, well, we're, hey, we're not going to be the ones to take his weapons because, you know, we're going to have mom request that. Think about that in a spousal abuse situation where, where you've got this uh, abused spouse syndrome where they don't even want to press charges. It's thank God they dialed 911 because they're getting beaten. And now the sheriff is going to say to them, you've got to be the one who tells us to take his property. That's simply not going to happen. And it's not how red flag laws were designed. 19 states plus the District, District of Columbia have red flag laws. Recent reporting and research shows they're being woefully underused and particularly so in Colorado and even more so not used in this particular county. So you can have all the laws in place, but if you've got sheriffs who simply don't want to protect and serve their communities, this is what's going to happen. The other thing I want to comment on is the predictability and inevitability of this. The Department of Homeland Security in, in recent bulletins has warned us about the increased threat to the LGBTQ communities, particularly pride events um, and high profile events. So we, you know, it's not like we can say, hey, we weren't told. When, when the reporters, even on NBC, are, are interviewing people in the community, they say, you know, I heard one person say, I stopped going there because we, we, we thought this was going to happen. We just, we just saw it coming in this particular community. So inevitability, predictability, and then the lack of intervention, even when laws allow them to do something. Now, can we predict that with this person's uh, encounter with law enforcement last year regarding this bomb threat, that if they took his weapons, this would not have happened? No, we can't predict that. But it would have put him on the center of the radar screen for law enforcement and would have lessened the likelihood. Um, and, you know, woe be unto the sheriff if we find out that the, the long gun used in this murder spree was sitting in his house last year when police interviewed him, and they had a chance to take it, and they didn't take it. You know, um, Madam Sa Senator, not everybody who consumes right-wing media carries out a violent act, but everyone who carries out a violent act targeted at any minority group, in this case, this bar, um, has hate in their hearts. And this culture of hatred is, is not confronted in the way you confronted it with enough frequency and not enough people are nipping it in the bud. And so it sits out there and you have the man who beat Paul Pelosi was an avid consumer of conspiracy theories. You have anti-LGBTQ rhetoric spewed on the most watched hours on Fox News at a regular clip against the U.S. military, against gay men and women, against gay teachers, against their right to exist. Speak to the dehumanization that goes on all day, every day in America. I mean, it's absolutely repulsive to watch the number of people in the wake of this horrific tragedy not wanting to take any responsibility. You know, hate doesn't exist in a vacuum. And this has been a record year, 2022, for anti-LGBTQ legislation led by the GOP, anti-trans legislation. And we now see libs of TikTok on the very same day that this shooting happened, targeting another drag show in Colorado. We've seen windows being smashed at gay bars. We've seen militia members lining up outside of these places, and it is just a tinderbox waiting to explode. There are consequences for words and actions. You cannot scapegoat and dehumanize an entire group of people and not expect that something terrible is going to happen. So somebody like this person, yes, we don't know the motive yet, but this is clearly a hateful person. And when there is a constant drumbeat out there from respected elected officials, from respected messengers, from TV networks saying that these people are wrong and they're trying to damage your children. People are going to take action. This is straight out of the QAnon playbook where we saw a shooter open fire and comment ping pong, believing that there was a basement there that contained children. And this exact same language of grooming and pedophilia targeting the LGBTQ community, it kills. So anybody who's out there claiming free speech or trying to distance themselves from it, yes, we have free speech in this country, but it has consequences. And you can't take part in this continued onslaught of words against the LGBTQ community and not look at this and have blood on your hands.